Let's go, let's go. What's going on, beautiful people? My name is Xavier Snow, and I'm the host of the Black Affluence Podcast. Today, we are joined by a very, very special guest. This man has been a successful entrepreneur for years, and he owns his own water company by the name of Aspira Pura. Name is Eric Brundage, and today he's going to be sharing his amazing story. How are you doing today, brother? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. You know, I feel blessed. Woke up. You know, with everything going on in the world today, I'm just, you know, thinking positive. Every day, thinking positive. That's all you can do, man. That's all you really can do. Man, I love it. I love it. And for those that caught the live, you know, we had a very uh, impactful conversation that uh, fortunately didn't didn't save. <laughs> Man, <laughs> you know, Instagram don't want us to be great. <laughs> hey man, hey man. There's always somebody trying to block, you know. But yeah. um, but we touched on a lot of great things, and uh, I just want to, for the people who didn't get a chance to to check out the live, you know, can you please just share a little bit about your background and you know, how you got to where you are today? Well, my background is like literally all over the place. So I started off doing a little bit of like sports, trying to figure out, worked, at, worked for the Hawks when I was in Atlanta, trying to figure things out, did some stuff with another team, another uh, job. And then I got into the CPG space, and which would be good, good space. And I worked for Monster, uh, doing, and I also worked with Coca-Cola as well too. And then from there, I kind of bounced around to other startups, but then came back to working at another small CPG brand. And then after that, somewhere along the lines, I started realizing like, hey, you know, I've always wanted to have my own brand or have my own bottle, or I just didn't know what, what it was going to be. I didn't know if it was going to be a water drink or, a, you know, an energy drink, but I knew it was going to be something. And then when I looked around, I realized there was water, but there wasn't water that was giving back with a purpose or a mission. Like a lot of water that I tell people all the time, they give you water for five Ks and they just be give you the water and then that's it. You never hear nothing about them. And I always used to ask when I, when I work places, I was like, hey, why do we give water? Or why do we do this and that? But then we don't come back and help out or help out when it comes to recycling or you know, see about helping with the, the community when it comes to sidewalks, when it comes to playgrounds or things like that. So just throwing people water, throwing people product and not really being involved in the community. But we're making all this money off the community. So my whole goal was, hey, I know water is a big thing. I know there's other brands out there, but there's not a premium brand that's going to be good for us. And in a sense, good for us, meaning like somebody that look, that's going to be selling to you and understand what you need for your body. Because mm -hmm. like we said on the live, a lot of people don't realize that 51% of bottled water drinkers are African-American. The 49% are people of color. So that just lets you know that we do the most consuming of the bottled water. So why is there not that many people that look like us that understand what we need, understand that when you're making money, the money needs to go also go to the community, helping out and doing things like that. So with Aspire Pure, I take 10% of the profits and I invest it back into recycling organizations and underrepresented communities so I can help when it comes to science, building playground and just finding the right thing that's good for that, that community. Because when I was in I used to do a lot of recycling. I'd always have to go up to the to the north part of town, the north, north, north part of town. You know what I mean? And when I got up there and I saw what the recycling was doing, I remember being up there and being like, yo, what is all this? They're like, well, every bottle that everybody brings in, we're able to build this building. We're able to help with people getting jobs. We're able to have walks. And that's what I want to do with Aspire Pier, help people who may have been displaced, out of work, and help them get back on their feet because every time I go to a recycling plant, it's always somebody that's gone through some life changes mm -hmm. or they're just looking for an opportunity to work again. So mm -hmm. that's part of, you know, the mission. And along with having great taste, yeah. that's that's one of the great things as to why I started Aspire Peer. Yes, man. I love that. I love that so much. I think a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs mm -hmm. can learn from, you know, your experience just by uh, the fact that you first, you know, you found a need, right? You found a problem in the community and, you know, you, you made a way to kind of combat the issues that you were seeing. 
it wasn't just something that you said, oh yeah, this is gonna, you know, make me rich or this is gonna make me a lot of money. Like, it was more than that. It was the the purpose behind the water that inspires you yeah. to to want to continue that. And I love that, man. Yeah, definitely. Because I mean, getting having a water or having a brand or any type of thing. Some people be thinking it's an overnight success. Or when I tell people I have my own water, they'd be like, oh, you're rolling. I'd be like, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm out here taking L's. Like, <laughs> I, like, I always tell myself, it's like Amazon the first couple of years. You may not be making a profit. You might be breaking even. But in the end, we see how that worked out. And that's what it boils down to because you know, everything in life that you want isn't going to be easy. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And if success was like that, everybody would have it. And the whole thing about on water is not just about you know making good profit and stuff like that. It's about getting a good product. And that's my whole business aspect is making sure I give people a great product every time. Like I've worked at so many different CPG brands where we don't give people good product, and then you you see people getting angry, going belligerent, all kind of stuff going on Facebook rants, Instagram rants, whatever it is, Amazon rants, and it's like all of it could have been avoided if we gave people good product. And good product starts off with the people at the top. Understand, it's not about the dollars. It's about making sure we take care of the, the supporters or the customers, whatever you want to say. I like to say supporters because if you you buy and you support me, I appreciate that. And it's all about caring because I always look at the mindset like this. You took the $24 or $40 $46, depending on the price, out of your pocket and said, hey, I don't know you, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to prove to me what you can do. So now you, you, you logged on or call me at an event or whatever, and you, you, you pay the money. So now I have the opportunity to show you why you should keep supporting me and why you should tell your friends by giving you a great product, shipping on time, shipping fast as I can, and adding other trinkets and swap materials in the box to make you be like, yo, I just wasn't just a transaction. He actually cared that I was supporting his business. And that's what I'm talking about. And I think when we have that mindset, it just don't become dollars in, in people. Every person don't be a dollar. It becomes, that's a relationship I'm creating. That's a relationship I'm creating. That's a relationship I'm creating. And then people will enjoy it. So not only we're having great service, you have a great product that goes with the customer service. So it's just a, it's like a double whammy. It's like a Batman and Robin. It's Jamal Chase and Joe Burrows type of situation. It just goes together. And that's always been my mindset. Like you cannot have great customer service without having a great product. And you can't have a great product without great customer service. Because so many times, I mean, you and I both know we bought products. You'd be like, man, I love this product. Then you go ask them about it. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I can't. <clears throat> what do you want? Whoa, what, what, what the? I'm trying to give you money and this is how you acting with me like why why does it have to be all this so mm. I just always been a firm believer I've been on this side dealing with uh, different people how things go and how things could have been smoothed out if someone just you know given the proper answer or just been transparent with them and that's another thing if you're watching and you're starting a business there's nothing wrong with being transparent I remember a times get instance where I was out of town and a whole bunch of orders came through and when you shop on Amazon, you gotta you gotta have a time time box. I'm just giving y'all a little secret. On Amazon, you gotta ship in a certain time frame. So if you don't ship between this certain time frame, they start flagging your account. And too many your account can get your account suspended, banned, or whatever. So Amazon was like, like do 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 look going off. This is in the beginning. They're like, hey, you haven't sent these orders. So I got online and I went to the person. And I was like, hey, I'm going to be a little late with these orders. I just want to be honest with you. I'm out of town. But if you're willing to be understanding, I'll add in three or four extra bottles in your in your order. They responded, man, thank you so much for telling me what's going on instead of just having me in the dark like most people. No problem, bro. I'll be waiting on my order. Boom. And they left me a five-star review and everything else after that. Man. That's powerful, Transp man. Transparency, man. It's, it's the transparency of, 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 of just letting them know what's going on. But... I mean, like I said before, you, you learn from dealing with other people who've done that. Like my wife, she has her own business. Uh, she does jewelry. And she's pretty much gave me the customer service blueprint, just telling me like, look, whenever I have a problem, I just tell them the truth. If people want to dance around, just be honest with them. You'd be surprised how many people be like, thank you. Okay, I understand. That's no problem. Instead of being like, oh, your, your order got shipped. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. Check the mail. 
Well, it's not in the mail. Yes, it got shipped. And then you're going back and forth playing games with people and people are like, see, you're trying to play me and I'm checking the order and it's not there. And it's, you'll be surprised the type of stuff that happens. So I tell everybody, if you have a new business, just be transparent. I'm not saying you're transparent to the point where like, uh, I had a great depression today or my video or my dog collapsed and I just can't send your order. Not that transparent, but just let them know like, look, I'm a little back behind. I'm going to send your order. Just give me a little bit of time. And if you're okay with this, I'll add a little extra something there for them. You know, it's all about give and take. You give them something, they'll be understanding to what's going on to your situation. So, mm. you know, what? that actually, um, that actually reminds me a little bit of, uh, cause I'm, I'm, I'm into branding and, and marketing mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And, uh, a book I'm reading now is, uh, your first 100 and, uh, just talks about, you know, being authentic and your brand communication and how important it is mm-hmm. to, um, even just like add, adding that human element to your brand, yep. you know what I'm saying? Like people don't buy from logos, you know what I'm saying? They buy from people, you know? And that's, that's kind of what I'm getting from what you said is like, look, man, we all make mistakes, right? I, I'm i more forgiving to someone who's willing to say, look, I, I'm, i you know, even though you may not have made a mistake, you may have just, you yep. know, whatever, had a little time mix up. Your people are much more accommodating to those who are upfront and honest about situations than if you were to just try to sweep it under the rug or like, you know, I get yeah. to them when I touch them. Like, nah, like, <laughs> you know, you understood the game and I think that's that's important. And uh, one thing I do want to touch on that you mentioned um, is the L's. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want you to, I want you to share, um, you know, if you feel comfortable, just share some of your biggest L's or one or one or two of your biggest L's and yeah. how you turn that loss into a lesson, if you don't mind. Definitely, 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 man. Um, one of my, my first biggest L, oh, okay, so down the, let's go down the, uh, the path of L's that Eric has taken. So my first L, <laughs> so originally, like I tell, like I, like I tell people before, the water wasn't always like this. At first, it wasn't ionized alkaline. That was my dream. I had saw like so. Let's say if I'm running at the end of the tunnel, I saw ionized alkaline with electrolytes, but it needed a little extra flair to it, and I didn't know what. So along the line, me running towards the end, roadblocks come. So my first company, I, I, I go with instead of doing thorough research, I just like I got, I gotta go, I gotta go. And that's another thing. If you have a goal in your mind, a vision, a dream, don't let small things that's going to stop you from or obtaining what you want. Meaning, mm. if somebody comes to you and says, hey, I can give you this two product, it'll be way cheaper. Don't accept that. Accept what you had in your mind and what you envisioned because that goal is what God gave you that would be most acceptable. So I took this first war. It was, it was good. I mean, I liked it. Everybody else liked it. It was purified water. But... They were like, hey, we'll give you a pallet. I'm like, cool. I knew something was wrong when they said, well, we're not going to charge you for shipping. At first I thought, okay, yes. So I should have known someone right when they said that. What? Now I know why they gave me a they gave me a pallet of water, which is seventy two cases, and the first pallet was like twenty nine hundred dollars. So this is seventy two cases that cost me twenty nine hundred dollars plus the labels and everything else. Now I'm like, oh cool, cool. So after I'm done with them, and I'm getting ready to like re up with them again because I felt like this is the only thing I could go with. For some reason, they kept procrastinating, procrastinating. And it wasn't them really procrastinating. The Lord telling me, like, hey, you need to not go with them again, you know. And then my wife was like, you need to look for somebody. Look for somebody else. So I looked for somebody else. I talked to them. I flew out and met them in person. We went down to the well, all that good stuff. And they were like, look, we can give you two cases. I mean, two pallets. I said, for man, how much? 5000 They're like, no, we'll give you two pallets for 2200 I'm like, bro, two pallets for 22? Oh my gosh. They're like, what's wrong? Is that not good enough? I was like, I was like, yeah, it's good. And I had to tell them the story. They're like, bro, they, they just got you. I was like, God is an understatement. So that comes out to me finding them because I was I was about to, you know, go back with them again. Yeah. 
we don't even really and this is another thing you got to deal with as a business owner you got to deal with subjective people trying to bully you mm. so remember i said i had an order lined up with them and they kept procrastinating yeah. and they didn't say nothing i didn't hear nothing back from them i had an order line an invoice that means i didn't pay it yet so most times people don't ship stuff in unless you agree to pay it or you agree to 30 60 90 you know net 30 you know net 30 you have so many days to pay it so I come back from seeing the, the new the new uh, guy. You know, I come from flying back in, feeling like El Chapo or Pablo. You know what I'm saying? I come fly back in. I'm just playing some joke, y'all. No, no. <laughs> so I come flying back in, and then I get a call, and it's the first people, and they're like, hey, what's up? They're like, well, we have five pallets sitting at a warehouse for you right now. And I'm like, you need to go ahead and pay that bill. I'm like, but I didn't pay that. I didn't. You told us. That you wanted five pallets. I said, no, I told you I wanted three pallets, but I also didn't pay you like I did the first time. No, 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 no. You're going to pay this. No, no, I'm not. So I hung up. Then they got the CEO on the phone. Then he got on the phone and called me. Then another person got on the phone to email. So now I'm going back and forth with people, and you literally got to be able to stand your ground because this is what happened. They, they called me after the truck tried to come and make the delivery, and the truck was like, hey, I got these pallets for you. I'm like... From um from who? And they told me, and I was like, no, nah, I don't want them. And I, this is just a news um, uh, uh, a suggestion for everybody. If you're dealing with products or anything, and it's the wrong order or you don't want it, don't accept it. It's just like certified mail. If you don't accept it, then you legally can't be held accountable for it. So they're like, I got this order. I was like, I didn't order that. Well, they sending it. So where do you want me to drop it off? I said, take it back. Click. So since I never ordered it, I'm never responsible for that work. So they took it back, and then that's when they start calling me, calling me, calling me, calling me. I count that as an L because I, I should have followed up and told them that I was going to cancel. But I automatically assume because I didn't pay you and I, we haven't had a net 30 or 60 or 90 set up, you wouldn't be sitting that. But, you know, some people are into that shady business in the sense where we're going to send it anyway. He'll accept it. Then we, ah, gotcha. So... That's another thing you have to be careful because people do stuff and try to intimidate you. Like he was literally on, on like, you're going to take this and you're going to accept this. And I was like, nah, I ain't going to do that. Like he, you know, like someone just, yes. Like, and you got to remember now, this is like my first, like outside of the vendor. And he just, he, I, I thought we had a deal. You're not a friend. You don't know me. You don't know what I do. I'm just like, oh, okay then. You know, if I had seen um, BMF, then I would have been like, you can't stand the rain. You can't stand the rain. I would have sung that to him if I had seen BMF back then. But, uh, yeah, so I ignored him. <laughs> he tried <laughs> him you, and man. I was like, yeah, he tried me. He, he really, and that's the thing. Like, when you have a business, people are going to try you. Yeah. And you got to be willing to push back but still be presentable until it gets to a point where you feel like they're getting too out of pocket. When they get too out of pocket, then you need to get out of pocket. But then until then, you need to be able to push back and be like, no, I'm not. I know for a fact I didn't sign up for this. I'm hitting them like, well, I just assumed it was wrong. I didn't I didn't say I was going to pay it. Right. The first time, how did I pay? Oh, uh, you paid me before we sent it. Right. So why would you send it now? We ain't set up a net 30 and net, net 90. You just going off goodwill. So, you know, you, you got to be able to stand your ground and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. My third L would have to be, when I first came out, I was pushing, I was rushing, and I was like, look, I want Aspire Period to take off. I want people to know about it. Got a, this company, do like, um, they send you like gift baskets to your house and to the job, and they were like, hey, we'll take your water and we'll ship it everywhere. I was like, well, uh, I don't know. I know you guys call. No, 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 it's no problem. You just send us 18 cases and we'll ship it out to everybody. So I'm literally packing all night, all these boxes, doing everything. It came out to be like 14 boxes I sent off. Overall shipping was $400, something like that. And then after that, they ghosted me. I literally called, text, email, ghosted me. All I had the address, and I, to this day, I don't even know what happened to my water. I'm still wondering if someone's just back at their house just drinking it and just being like, got them. So I would say that's an L because Something inside me didn't feel comfortable doing it, but I still mm. went forth doing it because I was so like, I want to push the brand, push the brand, brand. And I think a lot of times we have to realize to play to our own pace and play to our own speed. If it doesn't feel comfortable with you, don't do it. So mm. yeah, that's a, those are, those are 
definitely some yeah. big L's I took because they, yeah. they, they hurt my pockets and they made me lose product. Yeah, I want to touch on the last one a little bit more um, because, you know, it, it. you sound like, you know, you are an intuitive person, right? But that time you ignored your intuition. I need you to um, explain how we can work on trusting ourselves more and how you've been able to since then reconcile that um, that gap, you know, and actually have you been able to start trusting your intuition a little bit more? Yeah, um, I think, well, that time, that was an L. I kind of, you know how you sometimes take an L and you're like, ah, that's just an L, you know, it ain't that big. But my fourth L was when I lost this competition for $50,000. And I lost because I wasn't myself. Mm. And that L hurt the most. And that's when I really came into fruition with those two L's and started talking to me. Look, the first L was with the water. I mean, with the ship in the water. Mm. I said it didn't feel comfortable. This L, I said it didn't feel comfortable, but I still was trying to follow somebody else's mode, mm. pitch like they pitched, instead of being myself. And I lost. I lost to a person that didn't even have a product. They had just an idea. And the people were like, we would have gave you the money if you would have just explained you and, and everything they said is oh. usually the pitch I usually do. So that right there let me know, like, look, I'm, I'm too busy trying to do other people instead of yeah. being myself. Mm -hmm. And that one hurt for a while. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I, I ain't going to say I, I cried myself to sleep or nothing like that, but I did soak around for a little bit because you got to imagine that's 50K tax free they were going to give me. And um, after that, I told myself, I was like, look, going forward, if it don't feel right or if I feel like I don't know it or it's not what I want to do, I'm not going to do it. So those mm. two were two big L's. And I, cause you know, you only get a third time. So you really know yourself, but I really got in tune with knowing myself. And I say the best way to get in tune with yourself is to say to yourself, if this doesn't feel right, don't go through with it. If you get any inclination that this don't feel right, that person don't seem something seems off. This doesn't go. This doesn't, make you feel comfortable or you don't get an inclination like I should move forward, mm -hmm. then you should probably stop ways ahead because now all you're doing is moving forward and trying to talk yourself into it. In those two situations, I was trying to talk myself into it. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's all right. Even though he's just talking to me through the text and I he's not really answering my phone calls, it, it's okay. I mean, it'll work out. They businesses before. Yeah, right. Just because they did other businesses doesn't mean they'll do you right. And mm -hmm. just because so-and-so did it at work for them doesn't mean it will do. And yeah. Every, each time I was talking to talking myself into doing something that wasn't me. And when I was doing something that wasn't me, it was both L's. So now mm -hmm. if I go into something, I'm doing business, I'm, someone be like, hey, I want to buy a pallet. And I get a bad inclination. I'm be like, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Like, no, 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 it's all good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I pay first. What would you mean? Can I pay half? No, I ain't no half. You're going to have to pay all. I got a bad inclination about you. So you got to prove to me that you're the real deal. So if you pay it all, then we're going to be okay. If you don't, like, well, you know, you can trust me. For example, I'm glad we said this. Met guy, he randomly hit me up, um, saw the page. He hit me up on the gram. He was, hey, I'm starting a distribution um, network here in Chicago. I was like, okay, that, that's, that's, that's cool. That's cool. He's like, I'm going to be having sales reps. I'm going to be doing all this stuff. So I'm looking him up, go to his website. You know, I talked to him. Really good feeling. And he's like, I want to have your pallet up here. I said, okay, cool. Well, you know, this will be a discount price for the pallet. No, 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 no. Most of the brands are just sending me the pallet up here because I really don't have any money for that. And then I'll be able to pay you back later. After them first two L's, I said, ah, ah. something just didn't feel right to me. Didn't feel right. I was like, okay. I was like, well, you get the money, you let me know. Three, four minutes, five, I started checking on his page. Turns out he went out of business. He, he stopped doing it. A lot of company, he, he stopped going forward with it, you know, and it was like, it was another inclination. If I had yeah. some pallet, I was going to take an L on the pallet and I would have lost on the product. I would have lost on shipping and on product. So that's why it's very important that if something doesn't feel comfortable or right, yeah, just say no, man. If, if you, and it was crazy too because I was like, man, this, once again, it came out at my, at my lowest. And I'm going to say lowest isn't like, oh, man, I'm doing bad, but lowest in the sense where like, I'm trying to expand. I'm trying to figure out different ways so I can get into different markets. And he came, yeah. hey, what's up? 
It's always that's how the devil always show up. Show always yeah. at your lowest time when they feel like you you you, you need this. Hey, I, I can't, boy, go send me a pallet. And I was like, nah, man, nah, because it sounds so great. Because he was he was showing me the stores, he was doing all this stuff, signing up for stuff, going to events. Wow. When, he, when he said, oh man, I don't, I don't have the money. Let me know you ain't really invested if you ain't got that money up front. Yeah, so, that's. Yeah. There's layers to that, man. There's so many layers to yeah. that because, you know, even just from the due diligence factor, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's so many, like, if you look, like, you will find, you know what I'm saying? Searching, mm -hmm. you will find it. And all you have to do sometimes is just be like, all right, let's 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 connect on LinkedIn, you know what I'm saying? Let's connect, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me talk to a few people that you know that can mm -hmm. vouch for what you say you do. You know what I'm saying? That's that's yeah. kind of how you kind of check your 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 uh, dots your eyes and cross your T's as they say. Um, yes, indeed. But I I do want to dive into the water. You know, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I know I'm corny with the water puns. You're about done <laughs> with it. <laughs> That was by accident completely, bro. I promise I you. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to know, um, because you do offer ionized alkaline water, which is um, a yes. bit different than some of the water that we're used to drinking. Um, mm -hmm. Tell the people what that actually means and, and how it's actually beneficial. Well, between ionized alkaline and regular water that you drink that comes in a big old 24-pack or 48-pack that sits on the floor at your mom or your grandma's house is... Um, a lot of times that water is good for you. It doesn't replenish you. It doesn't rehydrate you. And a lot of times it's fossil water. Mm -hmm. And when I say fossil water, it sometimes has traces of lead in it. Mm -hmm. Or the bottle is so cheap that if any kind of, it gets hot, it gets sweaty, the plastic goes inside. So like a lot of these bottles are BPA free, PET free, and it has different layers in a sense where even if this bottle gets hot, the plastic inside won't melt into the water making you sick. But a lot of those regular waters will do that, especially those, those waters that aren't um, quality, I should say, if, you're, if they're not quality. There's a reason why you're able to get 24 of them for $4. You gotta really kind of think about that. You know what I mean? There's a reason for that. It's not good for you. Anything that's good for you is not gonna be that cheap because you're willing to pay more to care for yourself. So the ionized alkaline, and like I said before on the IG Live, um, I decided, I was like, hey, I'm gonna be telling everybody about getting it, let's put it to the test. So for two weeks in the summertime, in this Dallas heat, um, if anybody's been to Texas, you know it gets 110, 109, 108. It gets, it gets, you know, it gets, it gets the Jeezy things for album, 103, 105, 106, whatever you wanna say. <laughs> so I, for a whole week, I drank regular water, straight tap water. I mean, it came in a bottle, but it was like tap water. It's just reverse osmosis, but it still has you know, some traces of lead, fluoride, things like that. I drank that for a week. And just say by, and I kept on my regular activities, you know, staying up uh, late, going to bed late, getting up early, doing whatever, hanging out. Just say, need, needless to say, by day Wednesday or Thursday, I got dehydrated. I almost had to go to the hospital because, mm. you know what I'm saying, I just didn't have enough fluid. So then I did a whole week of just drinking ionized alkaline. So once again, I pushed it to staying up late, Getting up early, hanging out with friends, you know, all the all the above and some, going out, having drinks, whatever. And ionized alkaline kept kept me completely rehydrated and plenished in the sense where like my kidneys didn't feel like they couldn't breathe. You know what I mean? Mm. When you feel like you're not getting enough kidneys and you feel like your your lips are chapped. Mm. If your left lips are chapped at times or always white all the time, it's because you're not getting enough water to your body. And the water mm. that you're drinking is not rehydrating. So I did it with a spire pier and it, it and it was golden. Like literally, I wouldn't even you wouldn't even been known that I was staying up till two or three in the morning, getting up at eight or nine, going doing all my daily work tasks, doing whatever, running, going to the gym because I was just drinking so much of it on a regular basis that it was keeping me going. And people don't realize that sixty percent of your body is water. Mm -hmm. So if you're not putting the right water in your body to keep your your, your body going, it's like a fine tuned car. If you have a car and you don't change the oil on a regular you're gonna just burn the engine up. That's what you put cheap water in you, and, and you're and you're burning up the engine. 
You're wondering why you you always feel dehydrated. You're wondering why you have headaches. You're wondering why your body feeling stiff. You're wondering why sometimes your lips got all that white chap stuff around your lips and mm. why your skin feeling chalky. It's because you're not getting the right water. And ionized alkaline has the pH levels good for you because I don't know if we know, depending on what you eat, you know, if you eat a lot of hamburgers or a lot of sodas, whatever, your pH level gets lowered because of the acidity and all those southern foods. Whether it be soul food, you know, you know, spicy foods, whatever it may be, your pH level gets lowered. And our Aspire Pure has a 9.5 pH level. So what pH level does is it helps raise your pH level so that you can help your iron lines be better and get some of that other bad mucus and other stuff out your system so that your iron eyes will be better, water will be better for yourself, and it's just keeping you hydrated, keeping you flush, and making sure at all times you're good. Because if you get a lot of high headaches, if you get a lot of shakes, if you get a it's because you're not drinking no water. So, yeah. Cool. Man. See, I think that's so important. I can truly tell that you have a passion for what you do. You know what I'm saying? And not only just what you do, but who you do it for right and that shows in your products that shows in your delivery and i think that you know just going back to to you why you started it you know i think mm-hmm. that that is important to touch on that that why because it does translate into other aspects of your business so you know i just i just wanted to um to make that note that i, I do appreciate that uh that attention to detail <clears throat> and uh no. I, absolutely man absolutely um you know sticking with the the water theme mm-hmm. um no no puns this time no, no puns <laughs> <laughs> try my best <laughs> you know, my, my girlfriend hates my pun. well actually she's learned to love it but you know um i do want to ask you about the 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 cost the um, last time we touched on uh, uh-huh. a few of the hidden costs associated yep. with the packaging. Can you Whew. can you please? Oh, <laughs> 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 Brett, oh, man. man, it's the reaction. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of the hidden costs that people may not know that you incur when you have to? Get a get a shit get a pallet get a shipment. What do you what do you have to do? Man, so I it, it, it kind of sometimes when I when I run down the cost of my head, I kind of be thinking like one of those movies where they have like the the cost written across the side. And they be like, so let's start off with cha ching, and then this cost cha ching, and then cha ching, and then you are left with in the red. <laughs> <laughs> so let so let's break it down for everybody, and then okay, so a pallet. A pallet is 72 cases. That breaks down to 24 cases in the pallet. That breaks down to 1,728 bottles. That's in one pallet, right? All right. So you're like, okay, Aaron, that's cool. But you got to remember, when you grab a bottle of Aspire Pier, there's a reason why you feel premium. There's a reason why you feel like you're, you know, in the seven seas or you're in the West Indies. You feel luxury. You feel, you know, just important. There's a reason for that. It's because the bottle is a big bottle. It's a bullet bottle. And a bullet and a bottle is way more expensive than a normal bottle that you may grab out of the 24 pack that costs four dollars that you know sits on your house on your floor or you know, you kinda, you know, do whatever. There's a reason for that. Then the matching cap. I mean, most bottles of water that you drink that are that aren't, you know, higher in quality, let's say that, don't have matching caps. Everybody has a plastic cap. And there's a reason why everybody has a white plastic cap. They're cheap. They mm. they don't stand out. They go or whatever. But a blue cap, that's extra. Um, mm. Can't remember, but depending on which one, you could be looking at almost 25, 35 cent extra for blue cap. That's for each bottle. Then, and then we had in the, the bullet the bullet shaped bottle. The bullet shaped bottle works great because it feels good. And uh, the bottle of Aspire Pure, the label never ever feels like it's coming off or peeling off like normal, you know, quality bottle. And there's a reason for that is because when you have a bullet bottle, the label stays on a lot easier because that's what you're paying for. So then the label, how many label, the label size, when you start going down to dimensions of three by three, four by four, you're paying more for size. If I just wanted something to be small that you can kind of grab that moves up a little bit, that doesn't stay in place. Yeah. Oh, I could. Oh, I'd be killing. It'd be less than ten cent. But the label like this, 
uh, I'm looking at about almost 45 cent extra just for a label like this. Then when you match the labels, because you can't just have, you got to have blue on all of them. Then the label being blue, the bottle, you're looking at almost an extra $2 extra just for everything on each bottle. Ooh. So overall, you know, I think last time when I buy my labels, I have to buy them in bulk, but I'm looking at almost extra $700, $800 just for labels. For yeah. caps, I'm looking at about mm, maybe 100 150 because they go so many. And just imagine if I would just went cheap and just had like a cheap label or just all white, all white plastic cap, they get those for free. They only cost one cent. Label that's just small that you could just, you know, when I say small, like the type of labels that you may see on the, um, the waters that aren't high quality. They just have the name. Mm -hmm. And when you grab it, you could squish the label up. You could move it. Those labels don't cost a lot because they fall off. They fall out of place. It gets the bottle gets wet. Condensation makes them fall off. Even when this bottle's wet, mm. the label still stays on there. And there's a reason the label still stays on there because that's what you're paying for. You're paying for quality. And if I just had that, that wouldn't cost me less than three, three cent a bottle. And that would be like I would let's say this: if I didn't have what I had to make the bottle premium in my own my own vision, mm. I'd be walking away with an extra six hundred eighty dollars probably. That's just for the label. We ain't even got into shipping. Because you got to remember, shipping is another thing. Um, if you have a Fort Lift or you have a uh, uh, Lift Gate, that's another thing, depending on where your storage is. Mm -hmm. And then we haven't got into how many pallets. The more you pallets you buy, the cost of your, your, your uh, case go down. Right. The less you buy, the cost is higher. And then with everything going on in the world, you don't know what you're going to get. Then on top of that, originally... The bottles were taller, had a taller type, mm. and that was great. But then they like, hey, plastic shortage is running tight. We got to go from tall to, to the short. So they're both 16.9 ounce, but I had to change from tall to short due to the plastic, due to the plastic shortage and everything going on. So, you know, things like that don't really, it, it makes a difference, but it doesn't make a difference. And the reason I say it doesn't make a difference is because they're both 9 ounce, the tall or the bottom. But the problem is you didn't did a photo shoot with the tall bottles. So now you got short bottles. So luckily, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you literally have the pictures of people drinking a tall bottle. So if people can really be specific, they can be like, I, I thought I was going to get a tall bottle. Why the bottle short? But once again, that goes back to just making sure that you're on cue with everything you're saying. Telling everybody all of it's 16.9 ounce. Mm -hmm. All of it's still a great product and things like that. So, you know, being transparent with, with your advertising, you know, because I've seen a lot of people, you know, different brands I work for, product and then all of a sudden they, they sell it and it's something different and they didn't advertise or explain that and then that could be a problem so yeah man it, it's a lot going on before yeah. before this whole COVID crisis oh man it, it was great I would I would get like this I would get like that mm. and then you know it's just been crazy because shipping alone could be like an extra I think my last shipping I think I paid 900 mm. or 1200 for shipping and just imagine you're paying twelve hundred, fifteen hundred. You only got like four cases on there, four pallets on there, and that's supposed to be normal world. If I'm shipping four or five pallets, the shipping is supposed to be lower because it's a it's a larger freight. Even though it's only LTL, it's still supposed to be lower. And LTL is just pretty much having when you ship uh, half, it's not a whole truck, but it's shipping with other things. It's supposed to be cheaper, but due to the shipment and everything else going on in the world with COVID, mm. prices just gone rampant. So, needless to say. All this is being paid before I get anything back. Mm. And we hadn't even got into advertising on Amazon. We hadn't even got into that part. We haven't even got into their platform or what they charge me for shipping mm. and what I get charged for shipping because people don't realize when I ship this water, free shipping. Because if I'm shipping a 12 pack, it's 14 pounds. Okay. And let's just say I'm shipping from Texas to anywhere. My prices can range from $9 to $18 for shipping. Remember that I only sell a 12 pack for $24.99. So you get mm. and say you live in DC, the East Coast, shipping can be $16. Amazon take their $3 from my $24.99. Mm. That's $21. That shipping is $16, $17. Boom. What? That's three or four dollars I made. I didn't even get that. I even made back what it cost to buy the product. Mm. So you you do that 20, 20, 25 times. You in the hell, you you are in the <laughs> yeah. But once again, you you, you got to love it, man. You you got to have you got to you got to see the the end goal. Mm. 
to know that, look, I just got to keep pushing. I just know if I just get to where I need to get to, the shipping will get down lower. The, mm-hmm. the things will get down at lower price. But for me to get there, I have to keep mm-hmm. trekking. There's peaks and there's valleys in life. And right now, I'm just in the valley. I'm in the valley, you know, working the Aspire Pier thing out and the shipping and everything else. But I'm at that peak. And when I hit that peak, next thing you know, shipping's going to go down lower. And then when shipping go down lower, then my going to go down lower because I'm going to be able to get it for a lower price so I can get people a lower price. But until then, I'm just in the valley dealing with all those small headaches that a small business owner deals with. So, mm. yeah, man, it's it's just mm. all over the place. That's why I tell people, you want to shop on Amazon? You want to sell on Amazon? You better be prepared to play with Amazon because Amazon not playing. There's a reason why Amazon's a trillion dollar company. People don't, people don't tell you that, like, if I sell on Amazon, it'd be great. <laughs> yeah, but if you sell it for $18, Amazon take four or five before you even get paid. Hold on, what? Yeah, pay shipping. Okay, so then after they take the shipping out, they'll have their, they'll hold your money, and you'll be like, so where's my money? Wait a minute, Playboy. Wait a minute. They rub their hands like Birdman, <laughs> and then they tell you that they gotta go through all this. They gotta take your expenses out for your ads if you're running ads. They gotta take your shipping out, mm. anything else that you may have out. And before, once they do all that, then they'll let you know at the end, whatever day you're supposed to get paid, what your amount will be. There's been months I've literally, no lie, when I tell people you gotta love this, it's been months where I've literally got on my Amazon and been like, oh, eighteen hundred dollars, yes, thank you, yes, yes, yes. Mm. Ten days later, after they cut their expenses, Amazon be like, here's your pay, bro, five hundred dollars, bro, what the freak? Mm. Ads, shipping, and they cut. So, Dang. yeah, that's why I tell people. <laughs> that's why I tell people. And then we ain't even talked about Shopify. Oh, my gosh. Ooh. We ain't even talked about Shopify. So, yeah, man, it's just, it, yeah. tread lightly. I tell people. All. When people tell me, they're like, man, I want to have my own water business, too. I be like, mm. tread lightly, my friend. Tread lightly. <laughs> yeah. But look, that's... so, I mean, yeah, it's, I just, when I think about it, it just, in my mind, I'm, I got to love it. You know what I'm saying? I got to be inspired. I got to want to have a deeper mission. It's not about the dollars. Because if it was all about the dollars, I, I would. Mm. Because, you know, there's only. Because you got to ask yourself, how many times do you keep taking L before you just be like, man, I'm tired of putting in money, 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 and not getting nothing back in return. Mm. And it's like that. But if you love it, you're not worried about it. Like, mm. all the money I make, yeah. I take it and I buy more pallets. Like, I take it and buy more pallets. Like, so when people come to me or see me and they like, they're applauding me, I just be happy that people see that I have a good product. But when they be like, yeah, man, I know you out there rolling, bro. I'm like, no, bro, I'm not. No, bro, I'm not. I'm taking more L's than Ryan Leaf. I'm taking more L's than Jamarcus Russell. Oh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm taking L's left to right, bro. This is not what you think. But it's, that's just part of the nature of the business of the game. You know what I'm saying? You got you to gotta, you gotta kind of go through the valley to get to the peak of where you want to be. And I, I know where I want to be. I want to be be in stores that will be nationwide so people can go down to the local you know uh, Safeway or wherever or yeah. Wawa's or wherever and be able to buy buy Aspire period but to get to that point you have to go through some some trials and tribulations to get there so mm. but until then I just just got to keep punching through punching through punching through and mm. that's why I tell other people I tell everybody it's like man when you lay off your business don't don't try to take it and buy things with it just put it back into the business like literally like Let's say if I have 4,000, 5,000, I take it and buy, I re-up eight more pallets or six more pallets or whatever because the more pallets I get, the more I put myself in a position where I can start, you know, making more double or, or making more wave and, and then just keep on going and going, you know. So I've been doing this for two years, going on three, and they're all the money I've made, I just continue to buy more pallets, did more advertising, and just, you know, bring in more awareness to the brand. And, and that's what it's all about, like, I don't uh, it's crazy. It's just, it's real crazy. So yeah, man, I think about it, it just kind of throws my mind off. Like, damn, I'm, like my mind has been trained and disciplined to understand that, you know, I have to, what's the word called? I have to understand or prolong my gratification. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I understand that my gratification and my success will come later. But for right now, I'm in delayed gratification, understanding that I'm working through the trials and tribulations so I can get to my my gratification like and I tell everybody right now if you're listening I'm gonna look right at you envision where you want to be envision what it's going to be like to have it because when I'm packing orders 
like all night long for like some because you gotta imagine I'm a solo solo premier. Mm-hmm. I am the packing team. I am the sales team. I am the delivery team. I am the customer service team. Mm-hmm. You you majority of the time is me. I mean I partner before, but I told you that story about how he backed out when we had to put money up and we weren't gonna get any money back. So he backed out calm and gracefully. But uh, yeah, so when I'm packing orders, 35 orders late to the night by myself, I just constantly look into the vision and be like, you know, one of these days I'm gonna look back and be like, I remember packing orders and now I got the warehouse. Or I was packing orders and now I see my product on, at Target and, and all this other stuff. And that kind of thing keeps my fire going. And I, yeah, it makes me realize like, I'm doing this for reason or my, my biggest thing that my biggest dream that makes me feel even better is when I be like, I go somewhere in my mind, look, this is the playground. This is what for the kids can play at. This is where somewhere people see in the community, the money's going back into it. That type of stuff makes me feel like, all right, this is all for something. It's not just for the moment. You know I mean? Giving back to the kids and things like that, having a good legacy and people being like, you know, some of the Eric Brundage, he came back and gave to the community and, Man, I'm I'm proud to be supporting his water bread, you know, things like that. So you need to envision those type of things. You need to you need to see it. You need to feel like you're grasping it because when it's gonna get tough. And when I say tough, they're gonna be you're gonna feel like one day you got ten orders, two second day five orders, eight days, six, seven, ten days, two orders. And you might be like, Man, this ain't for me, bro. This ain't for me, bro. But you know, but you gotta make sure to realize that it's the drought and you got to keep on going but when you have those visions and you see it and you touch it and you grab it and you visualize it it helps you realize like this is just a, a valley and i got going so i get to my peak so mm. man so much so much knowledge so much wisdom imparted i i, I do want to say you know i first let me just say thank you for being open you know thank you for inspiring those that you know there's a lot of people that probably look at at people like you and and me it's just like man i wish i could do that you know but the reality is they can do it you know Mm -hmm. it's possible right we're no different than everybody else or you know michael jordan or any other great entrepreneur, Steve Jobs, like we're all made of the same stuff. You know, the difference is they and us, we have the the mindset and the ability to persevere through all of the the triumphs, all of the the setbacks, all of the, the negative attitudes that may plague some people and cause them to quit. And what you're saying is, you know, building a, a strong vision of where you see yourself is going to be the the internal motivation that you need to be able to overcome all of the things that you've been through and i i completely admire that i respect your hustle man i see you doing great things i see you with the warehouse i see you networking you know with the president and drinking your water man like, <laughs> <laughs> I can see. I wouldn't it, know man. how to act. I, I wouldn't know how to act. I'd be I like, man, y'all can't get me. I done met the president, man. Y'all can't. He's drinking a spa up here. <laughs> hey, you can see oh, it, man. man. You can achieve it, yeah. bro. Yeah, you know, you, you manifest it, man. You, you, like you said, you speak it and you believe in it. It'll, it'll happen, man. I mean, I remember years ago working for those, working for Monster and Coca Cola, always saying, like, man, I want to have my own. Brand. And I remember putting it on my vision board and I was like, I want my own brand, my own water brand, but I mean, my own brand, uh, my own bottle, but I didn't know what kind. And sure enough, the water came about. So it's simple fact that I spoke it, put it out there and saw it and then it happened. So mm-hmm. I tell people all the time, it, it's possible. It's possible to happen. Yeah. You just got to be able to believe it. So yeah, man, it's crazy. Wow, man. So I do want to, um, like I said, Thank you for for hopping on the podcast and -hmm. also just leave you with the the final words as far as, you know, do you if you have any inspirational Mm -hmm. remarks to someone looking or maybe on the fence about starting their business and taking that that jump into entrepreneurship? Do you you have any words for those people? Yeah, I mean, I I have a lot of words. Uh, 
I like to tell myself, I like to stay bigger, better, and badder. And it was something I used to do when I had my podcast. And I always said it because when you stay bigger, better, and badder, you're bigger in everything you do. You want to be the baddest that you can do. And every day you want to get better. And I say that in the sense, if you want to jump out there and do what you're going to do, don't ever let someone else make you feel like you're not supposed to be there. I mean, like I said before, the Lord would make way for your gifts because there's a there's a lot of water brands out there. So what makes mine different? I have a mission and this is what the Lord's called me to do. So doors have opened up. I've been in, I've done other jaunt ventures before and it wasn't for me. It wasn't my calling and the Lord didn't have, and doors didn't open up. I remember another business I had and it took me a whole, whole year before I even got a website done. That just goes to show you that it wasn't for me. The Lord was like, this is not for you. But with this water, I tell people about it. They want me to come. They want me to show up. I'm getting deals. People love my personality. It's because the Lord knows. And I said this before, this is what I want to do. And he's making a way for me. say that because some whoever you're watching, you may say, hey, this market's saturated. I can't do this. Or this is done. Everybody else. No, just if the Lord put on your heart to do it, do it. If you feel like you can add a twist to it, make a twist to it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just got to change it to fit to what you're doing. And that's really all what it is because at the end of the day, we've all, somebody's got an idea from somebody. It's just all about how you change, make it better idea for you. I mean, look at Beats by Dre. The headphones. Bo's, Bo's headphones been out forever. The only difference is he just added his pizzazz to it, made it different. And then it doesn't help, it doesn't hurt that when you have a great marketing. We all know marketing rule the world. So if you have a great marketing behind your product, it can make anything. And I, I tell people when they DM me or they say anything and they be like, well, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I want to do this business. I'd be like, man, there's people selling shirts and they making money. What's the difference between you selling it? If you feel like this is your call and do it. Like mm. you should not be discouraged because somebody else is selling a shirt or not. They're making money. There's enough money out here. And that's another thing you have to learn. And I've learned it too myself. I've worked on myself all the time. The scarcity mindset. Mm. You're going to be an entrepreneur. You got to realize that you don't have a scarcity mindset. There's enough money out here for everybody to get paid. So you don't have to be a hater. You don't have to be, you don't have to block anybody else's blessings. You can know that you can walk in your blessing and the Lord will make a way for you. And I tell, I go down and I tell everybody that, that has a conversation with me in the DM asking me, it's like, hey, about the water, about business. I tell everybody that because I think a lot of times we get into entrepreneurship and we think it's going to be easy or we think that everybody's going to welcome us or we think all our friends and family are going to support us. Look, I have a lot of friends and a lot of them hadn't even bought no water. And I'm okay with that. I'm cool with that. I don't want them to buy the water. Let me tell you why. Because I want people who are going to be, I want retention. I want people who are going to be a repetitive customer or supporter and they're going to want to come back. I want a repetitive supporter that wants to be there, not feeling like, I guess because he's my boy, I buy it. No, you don't really want to. You're just doing it because you think it's going to help me feel better. Right. But no, that's not how it goes. Having somebody do one time is not good. You want to be able to get where you want. The Walmart, the Targets, whoever, the great great brands, they have repetitive people that support and come back because they have a great product. That's what you want. You want retention. You don't want a one and done. Those are no good. So I tell everybody that. Don't don't worry about if your friends or family don't don't get with the product or don't want to buy or they want something for free. That's okay. You just let them do what they do. Just know that there's a, a lot of billion people out there that will support what you're doing. And if you have a product where you can sell it overseas, hey, mm -hmm. overseas is jumping to, they'll support over there as well too. So I just tell everybody, just find your niche, have what you want to do, have a plan, and then go when you're not ready. Too many times we try to, mm -hmm. I, I got to get this right. I got to get that right. Man, look, I don't work at different startups where they didn't even have trademarks in place and they still put their product out. Mm. Or they have misspelling bags of product and they still went out. Or the product was bad and they still went out there. It, and all it did was show me is you ain't got to be perfect to get your butt out there and go for it. You kind of like, you go and what you have to do. If you want to be an entrepreneur, mm. you got to learn as you go. And sometimes um, analysis paralysis, like they like to say, delays a lot of us from being successful. It's always about, I'll do it six months from now, I'll do it next year. Well, it ain't happened yet. I need you to stop that, get out of analysis paralysis, and I need you to get with it, you know what I'm saying? So, and I, and I just tell everybody, that's why you got to stay bigger, better, and better. Because if you stay bigger, you're going to be bigger in what you're doing, your last situation, you're going to stay bad, you're going to try to be the baddest shirt maker, baddest jewelry person, baddest water. And if you stay better, every day you're better in yourself to be a better person, learning your business, learning your numbers, and making sure you do the best that you can. So, 
yeah, man, it's entrepreneurship journey. It's a long one, but it's it's rewarding in the end because after it's all said and done, I can look back and be like, yeah, I, I did that. And people can look back and be like, man, I, I knew him. Look at him now. And it, it's a great it's a great feeling. You know what I'm saying? So I, I like, like we talked about offline, I mean, it, it's something that you could probably lead to your kids depending on what your business is because we all know a job just over broke. It's not something you can leave to your kids unless you own the place. Mm. So that's why I say, you know, entrepreneurship is the way to go for you to have your own unlock freedom, your unlock financial. Um, it kind of like they said in the millionaire fast lane. There's a sidewalk, the street, and the fast lane. Fast lane people understand that ten times in ten times in their time, their efforts will allow them the ten times of success in their profits. And people mm. on the slow lane on, on the sidewalk, they thinking that if I cut down my expenses it'll help me get richer. No, but mm. fast lane understand that if I double my profit, then I won't have to worry about my expenses because I'll make it enough money higher to cover my expenses and I won't be trying to nickel and dime and dribble. And some, you know, having that mindset allows you to be open to understanding that the more you put into your business, you'll get more. Mm. You could put uh, 20 or 30 more hours into your job, but mm. also you're getting more extra. You're still getting the same salary, but if you put that same 20, 30 hours into your business, you can go from having ten thousand dollars to ten times in that, twenty times in that, to now having a hundred thousand dollars. So that's why I feel like entrepreneurship is great. But we gotta remember before you get to that part, you gotta go through the valley before you can get to the peak. Ooh. My man yeah, my, just dropped that. <laughs> he just dropped the whole mixtape out here. <laughs> sorry about getting on that tandem. <laughs> hey, no apologies needed, man. You like. Yo, if y'all don't support this man's water, understanding what he has gone through, understand the oceans that he's crossed. Sorry, no more water puns. <laughs> <laughs> man, you, you you have you have definitely um, you know lit a light lit a light in me. You know what I'm saying? Just hearing your story. This is actually why I I got into podcasting because I love meeting. You know, especially the brothers out here that are doing the right thing, mm-hmm. that are living with purpose, man, living, living with with intent. You know what I'm saying? That that's what we need, mm-hmm. man. And and I know that your energy will, will transfer to many many people watching you. And for those that are, are listening and watching and tuning in, um, if you could just share where they can connect with you online mm-hmm. and how they can purchase some water. Definitely, definitely. Uh, you can. Um, I don't know if you can see my name. It says Eric Aspire Period, but you can go to the Instagram Aspire Period. It's A S P I R A P U R A. And if you're wondering, like, why did you name it Aspire Period? Um, because I we aspire with every bottle to give you the purest form of water, so that it tastes great every time. So that's why we name it Aspire Period. And if you're wondering, if you're like, is it Aspire? No, just think of regular Aspire with an E. We just we just drop the E and put an A. Just so you know, it looks a little better and, and it flows better. And just you know, plus on top of that, you know, we you know it's luxury over here, baby. You know what I'm saying? That's what we got to do. So you know, you go to Aspire Peer. You can go. You can catch us on our website, AspirePeer.com, or you can get on Amazon if you're an Amazon person. You're like, hey, I prefer Amazon. Eric, go to Amazon.com backslash Aspire Peer. So we're on we're on both platforms, um, depending on what your preference is. You know, the website. Or if you prefer Amazon, just remember A S P I R A P U R A dot com. Aspire Peer. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all that good stuff. So Aspire Peer. Yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Eric Brundage. Thank you again, sir, for your time, your wisdom, and your energy. Oh and man, no problem. Thanks for having me, man. It's my honor, truly. And until we meet again, brother, I want you to have a safe night. And uh, we'll talk again very soon. Will do, bro. Will do. All right, man.